fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, isn't there something pretty wonderful about the delicate flavor of fresh roasted peanuts? Doesn't it make you hungry just thinking about it? Well, now, you can enjoy this all-time flavor favorite in a brand new Betty Crocker cake mix. It's called Peanut Delight, and it really is a delight. It's the first cake mix ever made with butter from fresh roasted peanuts. What's more, into this mix, Betty Crocker has put the same fine ingredients you choose yourself, including famous softer silk cake flour and pure vegetable shortening. But best of all, new Peanut Delight cake mix is made with real peanut butter. That gives the cake its wonderful, delicate flavor of fresh roasted peanuts. Mmm, -hmm. it sounds too good to miss. So try it. It's more fun than a circus and more delicious than you can imagine. Next time Mom goes shopping, ask her to please get the new Betty Crocker cake mix, Peanut Delight. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! There were three men in the delegation which Governor Hiram Blake had received in the executive office at the territorial capital. Introducing themselves as Mayor Howard, Sheriff Martin, and Reverend Comstock, they waited until the governor spoke. Well, gentlemen, what can I do for you? Uh, governor, our town needs help. What is the trouble, man? An organization of crooks has taken over Copper City. I've never heard of any lawlessness in Copper City. Uh, that's just it. The outlaws don't operate there. They use the town as a, a sanctuary. Well, how did such a condition come to exist? Reverend Comstock here is an old resident of the town, and he can explain fully. Governor, the first mayor of Copper City was a man of deep religious feeling. He interpreted the golden rule as applying to outlaws, and let it be known that they would not be molested as long as they observed the law within the corporation limits. Of course, the criminal element gladly entered into such an armistice. I see. The golden rule policy has been in effect ever since. Copper City has become a crimeless town. Please go on. About a half dozen resident crooks control the community, enjoying its protection and selling protection to fugitives wanted in other places. They have a kind of local government of their own under the direction of a notorious bank robber named Big Jim Jordan. They promptly execute any crook who commits a breach of peace, commits any crime in Copper City. The elite hotel is their town hall. Well, that's right, Governor. Mayor Howard and I are mayor and sheriff in name only. The town's so peaceful, I've even quit packing a gun. Well, gentlemen, I know one man who is capable of helping you. I may be able to reach him by sending a letter to a certain padre. One man? We need a regiment of soldiers. I can't order troops into a peaceful town. Then get us this man. But don't send him to my office or the mayor's. The crooks find out everything that goes on in public offices. Where can he get in touch with you? At the bank. Banker Holly is with us. But the Alhoots think he's all for the policy to keep them from robbing him. Now, how will we know this friend of yours? He'll show you a silver bullet. Thunderation. I've heard of a fellow who uses silver bullets. Is he Don't the one... Don't speculate on his identity. And above all, keep what I've told you a secret. We'll sure do that. Very well, gentlemen. I'll do my best to have my friend meet you at the Copper City Bank on the night of the first. In due course, a letter from the governor was forwarded to the Lone Ranger by the Padre. 
Setting out with Tonto, the masked man soon afterward reached the foothills overlooking Copper City. Tonto, there is a town that has made the noblest law of mankind a menace to the entire West. The greatest of all crimes is public toleration of criminals. Ah. How we clean out crooks. We'll need the help of the law-abiding citizens. Me thought them want outlaws left alone. I believe they'll turn against the criminals if we can make them think that the criminals have turned against them. Uh, You have a plan? Yes, a desperate plan, which may mean death for both of us. Especially if the men who went to the governor have talked about our coming. Now, this is the part you play. That night, Big Jim, the bank robber who had become dictator of Copper City through the complacency of honest citizens, sat in the gilt and plush office of the Elite Hotel. With him were his chief aides. One of them, a hawk-nosed outlaw known as One Shot, was reporting. Jim, there's talk that the governor is sending a detective here to run us out of town. One detective? (laughs) Where'd you pick up a yarn like that? Go straight back to Mayor Howard. You know that Leo Blowhard never could keep anything to himself. Yeah, you're right, one shot. Must be something to the story. But what could one man do against us when we've got the backing of the citizens? Right now, us fellows who rule the roost are the only ones in town. And there's just six of us. Take weeks to call the gangs back. Say, Jim. Yeah, what do you want, Bat? The masked man at the back door. He wants to see you about protection. A masked man? Maybe he's the governor's agent. Detectives don't wear masks. A smart one might be masked. Just because you don't expect such a thing? Yeah, that's so. What'll I do about him? Yeah, bring him in. Right, you. One shot, you and the other boys scatter around the room so you can cover him from all sides. Right. We'll mighty soon know who he is. Meanwhile, the mayor, sheriff, minister, and banker were in the back room of the bank when Tonto entered and at gunpoint ordered the banker to open the safe. Me want all money in safe. I'll open it to you, crazy redskin. Don't you know that other crooks will hunt you down even if you get away from the lawn? Me take chance. Uh, there, the safe is open. Now, oh, hear me give you a sack. Put paper money in it. Certainly, certainly. Uh, just give me time. Indian, why are you doing this? Because you fellas go to governor. The crooks know that. They're hitting back. Mayor, did you talk? Well, maybe I did mention something about it to someone. I put all the bank's currency in the sack. Oh, uh, not good. This may wreck the bank and ruin a lot of people. Oh, no, maybe it's not bad, like you think. You, preacher, carry sack. You and mayor, come along with me. You'll pay for this, you red-skinned outlaw. Wait till the town hears about this. We'll make it plenty hot for all you crooks. You, sheriff, you banker, better you keep still... Till me and prisoners get good start. Don't do anything that will cause him to shoot me. We won't. Now, you fellas, get on horses. Yes, we're mounting. Easy there. Oh, oh. We'll go peacefully. Now, you take trail out of town. As the sheriff and banker rushed out to call the town to arms, little guessing that the affair in the bank had been staged for that very purpose, The Lone Ranger was admitted to the Outlaw's Hotel. Unaware that a trap had been set for him, he kept to his role of a fugitive from justice when Bat opened the office door. All right in there, fella. The masked man was well inside the room before he realized the true situation. Guns, which already had been drawn, flashed up, covering him from all sides. Over the long barrel of a Bisbee Colt, the king of Copper City's crooks was snarling. Get your hands up, fella. There, up. One shot, take his guns. Sure. Bat, close the door. See that our boys are the only ones who get into the hotel for a spell. Right, Jim. I got his shooting iron. Now, fellow, why do you think you need a mask in a town where the honest Johns don't give a hoot whether you're on a reward notice or not? I didn't come here to answer questions. There goes the fire bell. Hey, let it ring. What did it cost to join your outfit and hide out here? We'll talk about that after I find out whether you're really running from a rope or trying to spy on us. Jim! Hey, Jim! What now, what? Maxman, Ralph! Thunder H. Come in, Jim, pull the job. He carried off the mayor and parson. How do you know? That's why the fire bell's ringing. I was out in front and heard the sheriff yelling the news. He's blaming us. Jim, that means plenty of trouble. More than plenty. It was bad enough for that ornery redskin to hold up the bank. But he really put us in a hole by grabbing the mayor and parson. Town won't stand for that. The sheriff thinks the engine brought him here. Well, then we are in for it. Brothers! Brothers! What, 
We're going to have to fight a run. What's happening, Church? Well, the town Jaspers are gathering at the firehouse. The sheriff's telling them to get their guns and storm the hotel. Well, enough of us to hold this hotel. Man, I'm a stranger in this town. But it doesn't seem to me that you're using your head. I almost forgot you were here, fella. Well, this is your chance to prove whether you're with us or not, so speak your piece. The thing for you to do is catch the Indian, rescue the prisoners, and recover the money. Yeah, by golly, that's so. If we do that, the town will be satisfied. Why, we'll even be heroes and can go on operating the same as usual. May not be easy to catch that redskin. I happen to know the only Indian in these parts who would pull such a job. Well, if you know the Indian, maybe you can figure where he'll take the prisoners and money. I've already figured that out. Then you'd better take us there pronto. If you don't, threats won't work on me, Big Jim. I'll guide you in my own free will. But I want my guns back. All right, give him his guns. Keep an eye on him all the time. Here's your artillery, masked man. I feel better now. If you're one of us, you may have to use those guns. If you're not, you'll never get a chance to use them. Now let's get our horses and ride. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Country in every direction. How you, how you doing is the question. And here's one that happy people have to say. Eating, oh, we do, 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 That goes for the star wherever you are. Take Barbara Ann Scott, figure skating champion from the Northland. Watch her on this one. Barbara Ann's good. Now, there is a champ who's a real Wheaties fan. Sure helps to keep a gal up on her toes. A guy, too. Take Bob Lemon, who pitches a lot of ball for the Cleveland Indians. Lemon knows what champions know. Wheaties for breakfast, away you go. Gosh, no wonder the champs of tomorrow are eating Wheaties today. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties, and you'll be do 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 and okay. Okay. to continue. As the Lone Ranger and outlaws prepared to ride, Tonto, still playing the part of a bandit, escorted the mayor and preacher into a blind canyon in the foothills. A full moon made the night almost as bright as day. When the sheer wall at the canyon's end appeared ahead, the Indian called a halt. Oh, 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 oh. Better you get down here. Yes. 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 Indian! Yes. Where is the governor's agent? Where is he? Well, me thinking with outlaws now... Him plan to have outlaws follow us, and sheriff follow outlaws. If plan go right, him lead outlaws here, into Box Canyon, where it's easy to capture This is an outrage. You've subjected me, the highest official of the town, to gross indignities. Now you propose to put me in the midst of a gun battle. Well, you be safe if you do like me tell you. Well, I'm going back to town even if I have to walk. Now you stay oh, here. Let me go. Oh, you're hurting my arm. Come along. Over to Big Rock. All right, all right. I can't fight you. Uh, preacher, you bring money, certainly. We want you fellas to stay behind rocks. No bullets hit you there. What are you going to do with those rawhide thongs? Me not trust you. Me tie you up. And here, good shelter. Now, Mayor, you put your hands together and me tie you. <laughs> It was a half hour later when Reverend Comstock rushed out of the shadowed rocks and called... Indian. Well, what you want? The mayor's gone. Oh. How'd him get loose? It was my fault. He complained that the rawhide bonds hurt him and took an oath that he wouldn't leave. Out of Christian charity, I freed him. As soon as my back was turned, he slipped away along the shadowy side of the canyon. Well, it's too late to chase him now. Listen. Sound like outlaws come now. You go back to rocks before shooting starts. No, I'm staying here. Give me your ammunition belt and I'll reload your guns. At that moment, the lone ranger who had succeeded in leading the outlaw band two-thirds of the way into the mile-long canyon signaled for a stop. You've seen the trail sign? Three horses went in here tonight. 
and none came out. Yeah, well, that's so. The engine this prisoner's are bound to be in here. There are so many rocks ahead that you can't charge him. You'd better get down and try to take him on foot. All right, light, fellas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Hey, look. Somebody's coming. Skin me alive if it isn't the mayor. Hi there. We came out here to rescue you and the party. There wasn't any real robbery. The Indian isn't an outlaw. What do you mean? Just what are you trying to tell us? The Indian took the money and carried off the parson and me for the express purpose of turning the town against you. What's that redskin got against us? He, he works with a friend of the governor. The secret agent, eh? But who is that fellow? I, I don't know. I can't tell you anything more than what the Indian said. The governor's friend is with you now. Anticipating betrayal, the Lone Ranger had loosened his guns and edged as far away from the outlaws as possible without attracting attention. As the mayor spoke the fateful words, he leaped for the protection of a row of fallen rocks which lay at the foot of the canyon wall. Big Jim was roaring. One of the outlaws, who was quick on the draw, snapped out two fast shots. And a bullet slammed into the stone an inch from the Lone Ranger's head. Just from the crumbling piece of fallen rim rock sprayed his eyes, leaving him half-blinded and nearly helpless. He fired back. But each rock had become a dancing shadow, and his bullet went so far wide of any possible human target that Big Jim sensed his plight. Meanwhile, the shooting had drawn Toto and his ministerial gun loader to the scene. Advancing along the shadowed side of the canyon, opposite the rocks which sheltered the Lone Ranger, the Indian opened fire on the outlaws just as they were about to close in on the masked man. Oh, no! We're getting out of here! They're escaping. There they go. Well, me not able to stop them. Bring money, come along. Kimasabi, where are you? Here, Toto, bring me some water. Uh, me got canteen. You hurt bad? No, I only have stone dust in my eyes. Uh, me soon wash them out. Here, me pour water. Bathing the masked man's eyes, the Indian soon restored him to normal vision. As they discussed the escape of the outlaws with Reverend Comstock, the mayor bobbed up from the rocks nearby. There's the coward he's been hiding. Well, we certainly put those crooks to flight. Mayor, you're not only totally lacking in courage, but in moral principles. You are a perjurer and a blasphemer. Hear that? Ah. Sound like sheriff and posse head off crook. All the horses, Toto. Before Toto could carry out the Lone Ranger's instructions, the outlaws reappeared in the canyon riding hard. Those who were able to use their right arms had them lifted, making the peace sign. Big Jim was calling. Don't shoot! We want word for the last man! Then stop where you are! <laughs> you who can do it, get both hands up. A big posse's coming. The sheriff won't be able to keep those fellows from lynching us. But maybe you can if you'll tell them the truth about the bank job. All right, the posse will learn the truth. Get off your horses. All right, mister. We're trusting our next to you. A few moments later, the canyon echoed the thunder of the posse's hoofbeats. Reverend Comstock turned to the masked man. Mister, you'd better keep out of sight. Seeing the crook's horses here, those excited men might shoot you before you could explain your mask. Isn't that right? Somebody must speak to them. Let me do it. They'll listen to me. Very well, Reverend. The rest of us will remain hidden. As the sheriff and his posse men discovered the outlaw's horses and reined up... Reverend Comstock stepped out of the rocks. The lawman stared in amazement. Well, I'll be blessed if it isn't the parson. Reverend, where'd those owl hoots go after they left their horses here? Well, parson, before I answer that question, let me tell you that Big Jim and his gang had nothing to do with what took place at the bank. What? What happened there was a trick designed to show the people of Copper City that crooks could not be depended upon to protect the town. What do you mean? The affair was planned by the man we asked the governor to send to us. It was carried out by his Indian friend, who neither touched the money nor harmed the mayor and me. The money is in this sack I hold. Here is the governor's agent. A masked man! Sheriff, the silver bullet I'm handing you may serve to identify me. A silver bullet? So you... Fellas, this man is on the square. He's the governor's friend. We'll take your word for that. But we're a big Jim and his gang. That's right. We want those varmints. Even if the bank hold-up wasn't real, they could have pulled it. Big Jim and his gang are here. They surrendered to me and are entitled to fair trials. If you men who dealt with them commercially and politically could be tried for what you did, wouldn't you want fair trials? Aren't you willing to give these men the same impartial justice? Yes, sir. Big Jim, you and your gang are safe from mob violence. 
I'm turning you over to the sheriff. Here we are, Mr. Yes, yeah, we won't make any trouble. Now that I come to think of it, these fellas haven't broken any laws in my county. What'll I do with them? Hold them for the authorities in the places where they did commit crimes. Then clean up Copper City. Get some good deputies. And set an example that will restore public confidence in honest government. Right. Well, mister, you've headed me for the pen. A little while ago, I was trying to kill you. But... Thanks for saving our necks. Big Jim, you and your fellas get on your horses. Watch them, boys. Uh, Mask man, as mayor of Copper City, I take this opportunity to extend... There is nothing sincere about you. As a Christian and a clergyman, I take this opportunity to extend this... Oh! oh, oh the ah, person ah, assaulted me. Arrest him, sir. You've had that coming to you for a long time. But I'm the mayor. You won't be after the coming election. Masked man, you may think I violated the golden rule by striking the mayor. But if I were like him, I'd want someone to do the same to me. Reverend, there are times when it's better to deliver a sermon in action than words. Horses here, King of Tommy. And I must leave. Adios, Reverend. Adios, Sheriff. Adios. Adios. There goes a great man, Reverend. Sheriff, you hinted to the governor that you knew him. Who is he? There's only one man in the West who carries silver bullets, has people like the governor for friends, and can clean up towns like Copper City. A great man, the Lone Ranger. feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.